Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Have you ever been packing for a photography trip and realise, oh sugar, all of this gear is not going to fit in on my carry-on. And the only bag that will accommodate all of the gear that I need is my massive Shimoda Action X 70 litre. It, it's ridiculously big, but luckily, if packed correctly, I can roll and cinch it down small enough to go unnoticed by most airlines. At least that was my hope, because I would be knackered if they asked me to check this bag. You just want to pop your bag on the belt and then that's you. Will do, thank, thank you. you. Although I had gotten away with my overweight carry-on, my problems were far from over. You see, I am a nervous flyer on the best of days, and I can just about handle a large passenger plane. thought of flying in something like this makes me sick to my stomach. But still, I climb in and carry on regardless, driven only by the jaw-dropping beauty I am about to photograph. Okay, so this is it. I'm going to the wrong side of the plane. <laughs> I'm in this side. Yep. Oh gosh, right, this is really tight. Can I give you this? This guy's, how are you doing? <laughs> Mike, oh, Tom. Ah. Move it a little bit here. Then you okay. Oh, so once you're in, it's not too bad. Oh. Way zero one in use. Expect RNP approach. Runway zero one. Runway zero one condition report at zero six zero zero UTC. Runway condition code six six six. Drive. Transition level seven five. Weather at one three zero zero UTC. Wind 300 degrees, 10 zero knots, travel okay. Oh, uh, I have to admit I was incredibly nervous when getting on this aeroplane, but the, the, the pilot, it's just been so smooth. So immediately my nerves have gone out of the window and now I'm just incredibly excited to see what we're going to have the opportunity to photograph. We should be at our first location, which is quite funny that we're calling it a location, in about five minutes. But I mean, just looking out the window, it already it looks incredible. So um, uh, very, very excited to see what's going to happen here. Bloody hell indeed, I thought I was going to get sucked out of the window, but I tell you what, the views down to the ground were something to behold. And this is an experience I will never forget, but it wasn't easy. Freezing wind, motion sickness, almost no room to manoeuvre, and an autofocus system that didn't want to play ball. This was a far more difficult photo shoot than I thought it would be, but look at that view. Do you know what, I'm going to say it, I don't even care, I'm going to say it. It's absolutely stunning. I'm in the back now and I switched to a 35mm prime lens because I was slightly worried about the quality of the kit lens that I was uh, previously using on the Fuji. So we'll give this a go and um, yeah, I mean, this is what else to say, but amazing aerial photography, but with 35mm. Right, should we open the windows? Ready? Yeah, go. So, we continue to do more of the same, filling our memory cards and being hypnotised by the landscape below. But all good things must come to an end, and soon we landed in Reykjavik. But I had a feeling of uncertainty, as I wasn't entirely sure that I had any sharp images or, in fact, any good compositions. So make sure you stay to the end of the video where I will show a slideshow of all of the images from this flight 
that were indeed a success. At least in my mind anyway, you may disagree. And yeah, if so, as usual, let me know in the comments. So welcome back down to earth everybody, a pokey hotel room in Iceland, but that flight was incredible. I have mixed feelings about the photography, like I felt, I felt very much as though it wasn't me creating the images. I was very much relying on autofocus and where the pilot flew the plane, if that makes any sense at all, you know. But as an experience, absolutely out of this world. And we do have well over, <laughs> well over 500 images. Uh, so I was spraying and praying, man, spraying and praying. But I've put a few of them on my iPad to check, you know. And I thought it'd be interesting to look at the processing of some of these images. Because I know when I look at this type of photography, the colours, the vibrance, everything is, is, well, it's unbelievable. It's incredible. And I question it. I'm like, is that like legit how it looked? Well, I'm gonna show you. So here on the iPad, I've got a raw file. I particularly like this image. It is sharp, uh, certainly sharp enough. And I suppose the beauty of this type of photography is it's abstract photography. So sharpness doesn't matter as much as form, contrast, color, shapes, that kind of thing. But this, to me, this one stood out because of the colors, the golds, the teals, and this lovely, uh, division of contrast or, or division of texture. So I've got smooth one side, patterns the next. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go for a crop. I'm gonna try this as a four by five, and that's just gonna give us a lovely, nice divide between the image. So always start with a crop. I do anyway, because I like my aspect ratios. And now we're just gonna go in and we're just gonna play. I'm gonna play with a contrast and make this very quick. Like contrast looks great. Lift the whites, pull back the blacks, which is gonna give even more contrast and detail. I mean, already that's improved, that's looking fantastic. I'll have a look at the clarity slider because I think that is going to uh, bring out a lot of uh, a lot of detail and texture. So just increasing the clarity makes everything pop. If I increase the saturation and the vibrance just a little bit, don't want to go overboard, I don't want it to look fake. And now I'm just going to play with the temperature slider. Oh yeah, there we go. So just by warming up the image a tiny bit, really, really brings out the vibrance and saturation. One final thing that I will do is add a graduated filter, like so. And I'm just gonna just darken down this left portion of the image, just because it looked a little bit, tiny bit washed out. There we go. So as a very, very quick go on the iPad here, like just a couple of minutes in the hotel room, that looks pretty good. Obviously I'll finesse this when I get back home on, on my big computer, but I think, I thought it would be valuable to see the images from raw to a somewhat processed image because it does look unbelievable. And hopefully by watching this video and seeing how it's done, it gives you a bit more perspective when you see these type of images because I know they are very popular. say a big thank you to the sponsor of this video which is Squarespace. If you don't know who Squarespace are they're an all-in-one website building platform so if you need a website to showcase your photography for example you can register your domain you can you can use their drag and drop system it's really simple and straightforward if you've got no web building experience you can have a very good looking website even with an online store a gallery they've got 24 7 customer support so if you get stuck give them a call or just watch a youtube video and you'll pick it up in no time and within a day you'll have a beautiful looking website so if you want to give that a go go to squarespace.com forward slash heaton to get a free trial and if you like your free trial use the offer code heaton for 10 percent off your first purchase. Well, there you go, guys. I really hope you've enjoyed this video, something a bit different from me. And with a bit of luck, you'll join me on the rest of this uh, adventure in Iceland as we head to the West Fjords, an area that I've never been to before and will be shooting film. So until then, thanks for watching and uh, yeah.
Bye for now.